God bless you, Sister Vicki Chapman, the Chapron, and God bless all those who will tune in for Redemption, Part 14B. We thank God for you, and we thank God for all those who will tune into the broadcast and for those who will see the broadcast later. Amen. We're going to continue on Redemption 14B. We want to thank God for all those who are tuning in on YouTube and you're watching the videos and you are learning. We thank God for you. Make sure when you go to YouTube that you subscribe and you hit the subscription button below because it's important because we want to thank God for all those who are part of our YouTube family at The Real Talk Broadcast Network on YouTube. God bless you. Thank you. Remember last week, we're going to go back a little bit to where we were. And last week, we're, we were dealing with the understanding of Colossians. We hadn't got to this point, but we're going to do it today. Amen. So again, we thank God for all the Bible scholars and all the Bible students. Amen. So thank you again for being on with Bishop Robert Johnson, Real Talk Broadcast Network. All right. So here we go. Make sure you got your Bibles. Make sure you have your information so, and your pencil and paper so you can study it with us. Please don't forget to go to YouTube because these videos after the broadcast can be seen. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel. God bless you. So here we go. Colossians chapter 1, 13 through 19. Remember, we're dealing with Christology. We're dealing with the planned purpose of God's provision in his son, Jesus Christ, and how Jesus Christ, his blood, would be the offering for the sin of the world. And because of his blood, you and I will be redeemed back to Christ if we are obedient through his word. So as we go through today Christology, you'll be able to see what God wants from you and I and what he's doing, whereby we are excited. Amen. So here we go. Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. All right, so here we go. Verse 13, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Remember, the Bible says in the gospel, according to St. John, that light and darkness have no fellowship. Darkness represents the earth that we live in because the Bible says the earth is wicked and those that live in the earth who are not born again are wicked. So in 1 John, the Bible says, I believe 2, 9, 2, 16, for all that is in the world, that the world that, we, that you and I live in, watch this, all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And listen to what he says at the last part. He says, and the Father is not in it. All right, so let's go to verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. That's critical. That's where we are. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood. That's a personal pronoun signifying or stating that the blood of no one else could have brought us back to Christ and put us back in covenant relationship with God but the blood of Jesus we often sing the song, what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about that God sent his son as an offering for the sin of the world. That's why my favorite scripture again, Isaiah 53, 10, for it pleased the father to bruise him. The Romans did not take Jesus' life because it was not written in the Synoptic Gospels. If you understand and you read Psalms 22, the entire chapter, we see David in his doxology in Psalms, the first division, the 22nd book, giving honor to God for sacrificing his spiritual son, which would be part of the root of David. We're going to get to that later. I don't want to throw you off. All right, so verse 14 again. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Watch this. Listen what his blood did, child of God. Even the forgiveness of sin, where atonement could not forgive sin, 
and where atonement could not put you and I back in position with Christ, where atonement could not bless you and I so we would have an inheritance spiritually in the new Jerusalem. What the blood of Jesus did, it put you and I back into position to live with God forever. And that's a long time. So I need you to understand his blood washed away our sins. On the cross, out of his side came both blood and water. We're going to talk about that in 15. So here we go back to it again. So now let's look at this. All right, look at verse 14. All right, let's go back to yeah, 15. Who is the image of the invisible visible God? So this man, Jesus, is the expression or the image of the invisible God. That's why we're dealing with Christology. The word ology simply means the study of. So we're doing the study of Christ, understanding how God sent his son into humanity to redeem us back to himself. The Bible says to wit God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So look at verse 15 again. Who is the, who, who is the image of the invisible God? Watch this. The firstborn of every creature. I have to go back and talk about the great prophet Isaiah, where God gives him to write and speak in Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born and, the, and a son is given. I want to deal with the first part of the text. Uh, for unto us a child is born and a son is given. Consider if we read it backwards, it would say a son is given, yet he would have to be a child. Why? Because verse 14 and 13 said redemption through his blood. So he could not have come as a full grown man. So God sends him in the incubator of a woman by the name of Mary. Yet he is a child, but he's not born just based on natural birth. He's given by God to redeem you and I back to God. And he's the firstborn of every creature. Wait a minute. There were other individuals born before Jesus. What does he mean? He is the firstborn from the dead. He is the first one born to take the possession of the keys of the uh, of hell and to and to and, and to redeem you and I based on him snatching the keys from the enemy. So when we when he comes, we can live with him again in glory. Let's look at verse sixteen. Watch this. For in him, for by him were all things created. That takes us back to the gospel according to Saint John one and one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Well, what are you saying, Bishop? If we go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, we hear the declaration of Jesus stating these words. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So now here in 16, it says, For him were all things, for by him, for by in him were all things created that are in heaven, wait a minute, no man has ever been to heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, mm, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him for him. Consider what he just said, child of God, even the devil and what the devil tries to do in your life. There is no dominion or power given him except it be given by God. So God here states that everything that was created in the world that you and I know, it came from Jesus. Amen. And the purpose it came was that you and I in this world can be separated from the cares of this world so we can live in him. That's why in the book of Acts 1 and 8, chapter 1, verse 8, it, shall you shall, it says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses. The word power in the Greek is the word deutimus. It is the authority of God. Well, how can God give the believer authority? Because God is over everything because he created everything, everything that is in heaven. But yet a man has never been in heaven signifying that he was the God man sent to redeem you and I back to God. God, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested 
in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, believed on in the world. He preached through, through the apostle Paul to the Gentiles and was received back up into glory. That's why Paul, apostle Paul was blinded and knocked off his horse. And Paul said, who art thou, Lord? And Jesus, through the spirit, says it's hard to kick against the prick. You got to understand that God is over humanity. God is over creation. God is in heaven. Yet he stepped out of glory and stepped in humanity to redeem you and I back to himself. That's why we're studying Christology. Amen. Verse 17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Verse 18, And he is the head of the body. Listen to what it says. He is the head of the body. The church. He is the head of the church. Not the apostle. Not the prophet. Not the pastor, not the missionary, not the evangelist. He is the head of the church. Well, seeing that the physical body is dead and it paid its price, the penalty for sin. So then we must identify who is the head of the church. God is the head of the church. Jesus Ah, uh, who came in the person of flesh, yet he was God, is the head of the church. Well, where do I find him at? I find him in his word. So at the head of everything, child of God, should be the word of God. For it's in him that we move, live, and we breathe. I'm adding to it. I'm paraphrasing. That we have our what? Our being. So with God, his, without his word, we are nothing. Let's look at here where it says firstborn. Firstborn from the dead. That... In all things he might have preeminence. Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. The fullness of what? The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwell in the man Jesus. Amen. That's why we're dealing with Christology. Because we must understand God placed everything that was in his character in the man Jesus when he was sent to earth. If you read the book of Revelations chapter 5 verse 6 it says the seven spirits of God were sent forth into the world through who? Jesus Christ. And then if you read the book and you read the Bible you'll see that everything that was in God was on earth in the man Jesus. That's why he's known as the God man. Yet he was the father in creation the Son in redemption, and the Holy Ghost working in the church right now. Amen. So without Christology, without his blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, he said that he had no pleasure in burnt offerings, bulls, and goats. He had no pleasure, but he sent his Son to die for you and I. Isn't that amazing that God loves us that much? That he cares about us that much? Now we can understand the gospel according to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave, watch this, his only begotten son. Go back to Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born and a son is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. It had nothing to do with humanity, but it was because and for humanity that he gave his son for him to be ransomed for you and I sins. Yet we were guilty, but he took everything that you and I could possibly do and he took it to the cross and taking it to the cross. He died that you and I don't have to live under the curse and bondage of sin. My God. Again, we're having lighting problems, so don't pay attention to that. Just hear the word of God. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to go to Colossians 1, 20 through 29. And having made peace, watch this. And having made peace through the blood of the cross by him to reconcile, watch this, all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. Verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. Watch this. In your mind. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It is with the mind, not the members or faculties of our body, but it is with the mind that we serve the law of God. Watch this again. And enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled, verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable 
and, un, and, um, and unreprovable in his sight. Verse 23. For if ye continue in the faith. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you child of God. Even though you're going through, you got to remember what we read before. There is no power, no principality, nothing that the enemy has over you because it only happens because Jesus, God allows it to happen. And if you understand if God before you, who can be against you? But if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Listen what the Apostle Paul is saying, child of God. And despite whatever goes on in your life or what happens, don't allow anything to move you from the presence and the purpose of the gospel. That's why Paul said, I am not of the ashamed of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Believer, let me instruct you and tell you something. There is nothing that can take you out of his hand. But here, if you read before, the problem and the wickedness deals with and in the mind. Oh, I want to preach, but I can't right now. Let's keep going. Who oh, Shabbat. Verse 23. But if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which ye have preached to every creature which is under heaven, Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Verse 24. Who now rejoice in my suffering ah, for you. And fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for my body's sake. Which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister. According to the dispensation of God. Which is given to me for you. To fulfill the word of God. Child of God, it's not about my position. It's not about my plan. It's not about my title. It's about me fulfilling the word of God that causes people to hear God through his word. And the, and the process of redemption through salvation happens in their life. If I'm doing anything else, I am not bringing honor to the word of God. I am bringing shame. It is no time to get caught up in your title. Who you are. Where you from. The size of your ministry. What you doing. God, there's no you in God. It's only the word of God. Verse 26. Even the ministry which we have been, even the ministry which have been hid from the ages and generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. The mysteries that were hidden from the wise and the prudent have now been revealed to his children. Verse 27. To whom God would make known which is the richest of his glory, of the mysteries among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ah, I feel a preach coming on. I need you to understand, Peter was just like Jesus. In Matthews, the 15th chapter, uh, the Bible declares that a young woman came to Jesus. And when she came to Jesus, and when she said that her daughter was sick and she needed something for Jesus, but Jesus said, it is not me to give the children's food to the dogs. Uh, I preached the message, though you just throw your head back. Bow, wow, wow. Just throw your head back and tell God to feed me. Amen. But the Bible says she did not go away, but she began to get down and worship God. Amen. But her life is, in, if you look at typology, because Jesus Jesus Christ in the synoptic gospels is still a prophet. He is not dead and he has not risen yet. So he is still a prophet. The last prophet heard of the Old Testament uh, because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the synoptic gospels are part of the Old Testament. If you read Hebrews 9, 16, and 17, where it talks about where a testator has not died, uh, that the testament is not in force. So until Jesus died, uh, everything that he talked and said was prophetic child of God but when he got up uh, from the grave uh, and rose with all power in his hand everything that was wrong he, that he wrote or spoke we can now live but in Acts the 10th chapter we see the Gentiles now which the woman was a type of Gentile the Cornelius being brought into the fold but Peter did not want to do it uh, do you got you got to understand 
Jesus said, I came for the lost house of Israel. But Peter had the same understanding as his master. So when Peter didn't want to do it, God has to take him on the rooftop and God begins to minister to him and tells him to spread out a white sheet or spreads it out before him. And God tells him, Peter, don't call unclean what I've called or I've made clean. You got to understand God died for the world, but yet Jesus was sent to die for who? Israel. The, the, the text needs to be taught right. Amen. But Jesus extended his arm of love through the apostle Paul and Peter. Uh, Peter, when he went to Cornelius' house, the Bible said that the Gentiles were ready. Uh, and the Bible said they received the Holy Ghost. Uh, Cornelius had his entire family and all his servants and everyone down bowing before Peter. But Peter said, stand up, man. And the Bible said when Peter began to minister to him that the Holy Ghost fell and they began to speak in tongues. Peter began to look at the other apostles and say, can we forbid water? Huh? Seeing that they got the same thing that you and I got. Huh? Child of God, it is not about my title. It is not about who I am, but it's about the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Are you telling people who you are? Are you telling them that Jesus died and rose again? Mm -hmm. I feel a Holy Ghost preach in my spirit huh? because I know God is moving in this season. Somebody's not going to give up. Somebody's still going to be like the text we're reading right now. If you continue in the favor, grounded and settled and not be moved. If you had a neighbor, I would tell you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I dare you not to move. Woo! Ah, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me get on so I can be done. I didn't try to do that. Verse 20, um, verse 29, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working. I love the pronouns in the text. And that removes the element of man or that man has something to do with God's majesty. Paul uses a plethora, a multiplicity of uh, pronouns. I really love that. Which worketh in me mightily. Um, let's go to the next slide. I'm going to skip past myself. This right here is critical. We're dealing with Christology. We're almost done. Who is this prophesied child? Now read this with me. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. You got to consider there's two applications here. There's a child born, yet but in his birth it's because he's given by God. If we leave it at being born, then the significance of his birth has something to do with man and woman. But here to, for God to clarify it, this child is just not born, but he's given. Uh, that's the same thing with Jeremiah. If you go read Jeremiah chapter 1, God said, I formed thee and I called to be, thee to be a prophet to the nation before thy birth. Let's finish reading. And the government um, shall be upon his shoulder. It doesn't say shoulders. Uh, just like the Bible says the arm of the Lord in Isaiah. It does not say the arms of the Lord. But it says the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. So you can see the purpose in, of redemption. I'm almost done. Let me go to the next slide. So this is why. This is why Christology in Jesus. This is the critical part right here with me. Please stay with me before you log out. We're almost done. The river of life. Revelations 22, verses 1 through 5. Then the angels showed. This is John on the Isle of Patmos again. Um, I have a different theory, theory of time when Revelations was written, but I'm not going to deal with that. I don't want to confuse anyone. Um, chapter, verse 22, chapter 22, verse 1. And the angels showed me a river of water, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and, and the Lamb. But here it does not say, and Jesus. So many people are caught up on the Trinity and understanding the three persons are three manifestations of God, but God here simply states his purpose that Jesus, the man, came into the world. So many people are causing confusion when if you just stick with the text, 
you don't have to go outside the realm of God's word and it answers everything to the believer and for the believer. Here he says, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2, but I need, let me go back a little bit. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, around verse 16, God tells Nathan to go tell David that his throne would be forever. Now, how can a physical man occupy a throne that would be forever? But you got to go back and look at the promise made by God that we did in Redemption 1, 2, 3, where in Genesis 49 and 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes, and to the, uh, there be a lawgiver from between his feet, and to there be a gathering of the people. So now we see that particular aspect of the gathering of the people. Let me, let me hurry up. Um, verse 2, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life. Now, wait a minute. It says, on either side of the river, the tree of life, which, watch this now, which is 12 kinds of fruit, 12 tribes of Israel, God's going to bring them back, yielding its first fruit each month. Uh, I'm going to teach this a little in, in 15. The leaves of the tree, watch this, were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and his servants. Consider in the beginning when God created Adam, he was a servant. Um, yet Adam was to till the ground and he had dominion and power over everything. This word servant in the Greek if you, or Latin, if you look at it, means worshiper or one who sits or bows before God. So what God is saying now uh, around the throne, it will be God, the lamb, which is his word, his purpose, all right, and the servants, those who have, those who have made it and have those who have washed their robes uh, white in the blood of the Lamb, who will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and night will be no more. There will be no need, th there will be no need, no light. There will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever forever and ever. This is the purpose of Christ dying, child of God, to put you and I back in the position that Adam gave up. That's why Christology. Before I go on with redemption, I wanted to show you this. It's critical and important. The last slide, and we're done for the day. New Eden. And man, I want to show you this. Come on. The promise to overcomers. And I want to show you something here that's critical. Um, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. To him that overcometh, watch this, what we were reading in Colossians. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat the tree of life. So those who overcome it, like we read in Colossians, God is going to give you the same place that Adam forfeited and that he gave up. He's going to give you of the same tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. Revelations 2 and 7. God bless you, believers. God bless you, child of God. We pray that something was said today to bless you and to let you know that God is good and he's amazing, that he loves you. Please go back and read and this video and share this video with as many as possible. Please go back over it. And, and make sure that you know what God's will is for your life. This has been Bishop Robert Johnson, Redemption 14B. God bless you. We love you very much. Take your time. Go back over. Read. Know the word for yourself. No one, no one, no one, you can't blame anyone when he comes, God bless you.